I'm here with Dr. Megan Kirschling, and we're going to talk about hormones and brain injury. So I first met Dr. Megan through Dr. Jeremy Schmo when we did a spring brain health seminar in spring 2021, and she shared so much great information, and I'm so excited to have this hormone conversation particularly because I feel like this is something that is really missed in the brain injury world. I agree. So, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's just great to be on the show and share information about one of my huge passions, which is hormones. I know a very, very little bit about this topic, so I'm excited to learn and ask a lot of questions. <laughs> so just to start off, like, how does brain injury affect hormones? What is the relationship between brain injury and our hormones? So this is one of the topics that we're learning more and more about. One of the ways that I actually started to realize how much they affect each other is because one of the things that I've done along my career is I actually worked with the military as a civilian for about three and a half years. So from 2010 to the middle of 2013, I was overseas and working with the military. And so I worked a lot with individuals with head injuries, um, more in the muscular skeletal world at that point. But you just really realize that a head injury affects the total person and the total body and everything. But one of the things that I think we don't really pay attention to as much as we should is how this affects the hormones. And it doesn't even have to be that you injured a specific part of the brain, like the pituitary gland, we know affects hormones, the hypothalamus, we know affects hormones. Um, it's not even that you have to have a head injury there to have changes in the hormones. Every head injury, because of the fact that there's inflammation in the nervous system and the nervous system, the immune system, and the hormone system speak so closely to each other, every head injury is then going to affect hormones. So in males, we see a huge decrease in testosterone. In women, we really see just this complete chaotic state sort of set in where it can go in a ton of different ways from estrogen dominance to progesterone deficiency to you know testosterone being high or low. And so we really then start to see that the hormones start to try to compensate and change because of the uh, head injury. And that what happens then is that you then are dealing with two problems, both the inflammation in the nervous system and the chaos that occurs in the hormones. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> I know it's a lot to unpack. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Brain injury yes. affects hormones. Wow. Yeah. One of the easiest places to start is one thing that we know for sure is we tend to see progesterone, which is the first step in the hormone cascade. So we tend to take fats and cholesterol and make progesterone, and then that will go through and make all the other hormones in both men and women. And so we know progesterone levels are decreased after head injury. We also know if we give progesterone, there's lots of research on this, we can help heal brain injuries. And so I think that's a good sort of first step of this is one thing that we know for sure. And that's the very first step of the hormone cascade. So when progesterone is changed or affected in any way, shape or form, the whole hormone cascade is. And we know without any doubt that after head injuries, we see decreases in progesterone and imbalances in progesterone that then lead to more inflammation in the brain and then more changes in even like neurotransmitters um, that we find in the brain. So it has a huge relationship there. Mm -hmm. So what happens if it goes untreated? So if it goes untreated, we see two things. We see a twofold problem. We see more inflammation in the brain because if you're not producing as much progesterone or you don't have as much progesterone, you also then um, aren't utilizing something called GABA as well. And GABA is calming to the brain. So then you are in this excitatory inflammatory state that continues in the brain. We also then see when there is more inflammation and that it's going untreated or it's going on, um, that it doesn't have the GABA to help settle it down, that then those hormones are going to be even more out of balance. And so that's when then we can even use like progesterone is starting to become much more of a mainstream treatment for head injuries so that we can use that to help calm the brain and then get the hormones to be rebalanced. So it could have a major impact on your treatment and on your recovery if you are able to address hormones. Yes. Wow. And 
On top of that then too, when progesterone goes off, then we also talk about the adrenal component and the stress response. Because in the hormone pathway, we've got the progesterone pillar, the cortisol stress pillar, and then we've got those feel-good hormone pillar, pillars of DHEA, estrogen, and testosterone. Whether we're a male or female, obviously we're going to then drive sort of what the final outcome is for the hormones we wanna make. But the other part of it too is after progesterone then comes this component where there's that stress response and cortisol. So then when all of that goes out of, um, goes awry, then what we also then start to see is more of a stress response in the body. Cortisol can either go really high or it can actually, what I call flatline and go really low and we don't make the cortisol that we need. And then that's going to directly affect the way that we heal. Wow. So hormones directly affect our healing process. Definitely. Yes. That's really crazy because I'm thankful that more recently, I think there has been a little bit more knowledge or more of this brought to the forefront, but you have people that have a brain injury and years, years pass, even decades Mm -hmm. may pass and their hormones may never have been addressed. And so with what you're saying about when you have a brain injury, your progesterone levels decrease, that there's been research coming out that's showing like these are some physical changes in the brain when you have a brain injury. And so for those who have not had it addressed to them, what I'm hearing is that this could explain a lot (laughs) as far as like for the people Mm -hmm. who may be listening that have been having persistent symptoms that haven't gone away, you know, this could be one of the reasons. And especially because of how this is all connected back to the pituitary gland. So everything in the pituitary gland um, is a negative feedback. So it's constantly taking information from our body and deciding like where our hormones are, our thyroid hormones, our um, sex hormones, our you know adrenal hormones. It takes all this information and then the pituitary decides, do I need more of this or do I need less of this? And then it's going to release a hormone to tell, okay, increase this production or decrease this production. After you've had a head injury and you've got just all of these mixed signals going on in the body, that then leads to to this pituitary system and hypothalamus pituitary access just being super confused. And so that's where a lot of times to really get to the bottom of everything and balance everything out, we've got to not only decrease the inflammation and fix the brain, but we've also got to restore proper hormone balance so that they're not working against each other. Okay. So inflammation plays a huge role in this as well. Yes, definitely. And, you know, when we look at head injuries, I think there's a lot of things we've come a long way with head injuries, as you know. (laughs) And I mean, I think that that's beautiful because I tell this story a lot, but when I worked in 2010 with the military where, you know, you will see head injuries at a whole nother level because of the traumatic brain injuries that they unfortunately occur pretty regularly um, when they're deployed. But we were telling people in 2010, not me, but other people were, you know, giving the message that after a year you were healed, that Mm. brain injuries only lasted a year. Just in 2010. 2010. Wow. 2010. I remember going to uh, a, like a briefing that was talking about mild traumatic brain injuries. And the main physician there was saying, you know, We really don't have any knowledge and there's no reason to believe that after a year there would be any uh, reason to treat or that there would be anything that would be continuing on with a head injury. And I just thought to myself, wow, even if you weren't treated. So even if you maybe had a head injury in the military and then thought, okay, I'll just get over this uh, and I'll be fine. And then more symptoms came that they, we were telling people that after a year, you were fine, which is completely, I mean, I don't think anything more false could actually be stated. (laughs) I don't think anything more false. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a terrible message. 
it's mind blowing for me to 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 think that in 2010 that's what was being told to the military because my, well my brain injury my first TBI happened in 2007 I've had multiple brain injuries yeah. multiple concussions um, largely due to undiagnosed vestibular problems falling hitting my head all all sorts of different times so I know why my journey has probably lasted so long as also been a result of multiple injuries, but I'm here at 14 years, right? So, and I'm still, it affects me every single day. Yeah. And then there are other people who may be listening to this podcast that have only had one brain injury, but it was five years ago and they're still every day having problems. Mm -hmm. Now, and I will say there's a little bit with the military, just of the fact of like, there's a little bit, military medicine's a little bit different than even traditional medicine or alternative medicine in the U S in the sense of they're very quick to sort of downplay things. Um, I think in general, just because too of like disability and whatnot, but even with that being said, I mean, it's just a ridiculous message or, you know, to have somebody who treats anything in this realm, believe that a there's a timeline that at 366 days, you'll be healed. So just, you know, get to that point. And two, that this is a very uh, non-complex, simple process of just people will be healed in a short period of time. So there's yeah. not really all this other, all of these other things that we have to look at. Or thinking, you know, because it's invisible, right? So like it's right. on the outside, you think, oh, this, they're just confused or it's just headaches. But, mm-hmm. you know, you're here explaining like, well, there are physical hormonal changes that can happen in the brain and body as a result of a a brain injury. And one of the main things that we do see is the cortisol levels. And so cortisol is the stress response and it's a stress hormone from our adrenal glands. And what should happen every day at about five, 6 a.m., we should spike it. We should spike our cortisol. So we actually want to get out of bed. We want to get the day going. We want to eat like our blood sugar should come down so that we want to eat and that we want to break our fast and go on with our day. I call it your punching bag because it should be there in the morning so that you can get the day rolling and whatnot and not feel like things are sort of getting thrown at you. But what should happen then is it should come down as the day goes on. What happens is that after a head injury, that if it doesn't go treat it, it can just stress out those adrenal glands and it can stress your body out to the point where you don't get the spike in the morning. And that's the flat line I was talking about. So that's like being so tired, not being able to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's like describing so much that I've experienced and that I know a lot of our listeners have as well. Mm-hmm. And that's a big part to hormones because that cortisol part is right between your progesterone, that first step I talked about, and us making either estrogen or testosterone, that feel good hormone. And so if there's all of this stress and stress response and just complete shutdown in this middle step, then what happens is that you then don't have the progesterone that you need and utilizing it correctly. And both men and female females need to do that. And you don't get that end product of estrogen and testosterone. You're just sort of stuck. You're flatlined. And so that's where too, it's really important for us to put all this together because if we don't, then it's really going to be an uphill battle, which I think will resonate with people because after you've had a head injury, it's an uphill battle. Yeah, it really is. I think fatigue is one of the big, big, big symptoms that affects so many people after a brain injury. And I would never have thought that fatigue could have come from hormone or cortisol. I would have never thought that. I, you know, I've always thought it was from my brain being tired. But, you know, what what does tired actually medically mean, right? Or there could mm-hmm. be multiple factors contributing to this. So this is teaching me a lot today. And that's where too, I mean, it really is important to, as you're putting this all together and as complex as brain injuries are, to really look at the big picture. Because unfortunately, once you've had this kind of trauma or blow to the body, it is a lot of times that I think we're conditioned to think, here's where the problem, like, this is what caused the problem. So cause and effect is that, you know, after such a big hit or blow to the body that, okay, this is affected and changed all these things. But what we don't do a lot of times and what we really do need to do is once that cause occurs, a lot of times there's a lot of other things then that are affected. 
and especially hormones. And so a lot of times in order to get everything and the inflammation in the body down and get everything back to normal, we have to address all these, you know, different things because of the fact that the body really has gone into such a state of stress. Through your darkest night, hope survives.